Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. This is a continuation of a video I did a month ago. Today is August 31st, 2023. It's an update for the Chrome driver error that you will see when using Selenium. If you have an error that looks like this, for example, this is the video for you. It started occurring in version 115. Now we're at 116. This is gonna be a continuation because it's going to be headaches from here on out. I'm going to show you two ways to deal with this as workarounds and further examples as well as try to explain what's really going on. Feel free here to hit me up on my socials as usual. Let's get started. We're going to have three imports. The first is going to be the native web driver from Selenium. We're going to have this which is the Chrome services for the web driver. This is going to be important in a second and I'll explain why. And then I decided to use this when I'm actually doing my scraping example that we're going to see. Currently, I'm running version 4.11.2 for Selenium. Also, I have installed the newer Chrome driver 116. Dot whatever junk. I'm on a Mac. This is how I found what version I'm currently running. If you notice, we're going to have two examples of where this fails. This is the first one. And it's not the Chrome services. It's actually due to this right here. We're going to get into why and what's up. First thing I want to run through is if you don't want to hear this explanation, you just want the code, just skip ahead. As of Selenium 4, you do not need to pass the explicit file path for your .exe file for your web driver. If you're using an older version of Selenium 3, that is something you need to explicitly call. From my last video, I've been told that while some people have Selenium 4, they are still encountering an issue. And I noticed this with people who are using different operating systems from mine, which is a little troubling because I'm not sure what's really going on and I didn't completely see their setup. So this is why I'm going to give two examples and hopefully the these workarounds will help you, but no guarantees. Since I'm going to use the native Selenium web driver, here's what's going on. I'm saying from selenium.webdriver.chrome.service import service with an alias of Chrome service. Then we're going to create this variable called service. We're going to create this file path where the native executable path is whatever path we're calling from our desired device. If you have Windows, I'm not sure where your file path is. You will need to look that up. The problem is we have two distinctive ways of creating our instance with this web driver. The native Selenium driver and a third party application that does the same thing. As of Selenium 4, what happens is your package manager will find whatever instance you need that's up to date and deal with it from there. This is doing the same thing and it's routinely managed, which is great. Unfortunately, in our case, this started failing as of the last two versions of Google Chrome. What happens is the package managers were doing everything internally for us through Selenium so we didn't have to call the file path anymore and download a new executable every single time or find a pointer to grab that file. Unfortunately because of the way that it's been structured lately we do have to go back to this kind of generic notation but we have a caveat you can call it or you do not have to depending on how you set this up. That's why I have two examples. Essentially when they chose to update this for the last two Chrome drivers, it's been causing some issues and that's why this video and the last video were created. You're going to see some gibberish that says now you're going to use the Selenium web driver for Chrome as a testing tool and you're going to see something that says JSON endpoints. Just think of this as a pointer to your file where you're getting this executable that's going to be used for your connection. For me, I'm only interested in web scraping. But for you, you may be doing some unit testing. For this first example, I decided to go through Indeed, but that's not important. What's really important is these right here that are highlighted because you have the deprecation of the old way to call your instance where you're getting that executable file. As of Selenium 4, you're going to use this new setup with the service. And I think this might be one option that's kind of throwing people off. So after you alias it, we could call it empty like this. We don't need to put anything inside of it. 
You can fill out any of your option arguments as you would like, and you're calling the native web driver through Selenium, where we're taking our service, which is this, and whatever options, and we're running it through whatever website that we want it use, in this case for web scraping, but it could be whatever you're doing. And if we scroll down, we're gonna see that indeed it does work. And you'll know that this is using Selenium 4 because you're using the find element set up like this with this by class that we imported. That's how you'll know that we're not using the older version. And you'll look at a lot of examples online and it's still using a lot of the Selenium 3, even in newer files that are produced this year. Be leery of that because that could throw off your projects. Here is the alternate version that I decided to add today because of the fact that a lot of my subscribers are still having to use a file file path from what I've noticed. I'm still using these two imports and I create this file path. You're going to have to use whatever file path you use. And you have to also notice that these slashes are going to be reversed if you're using a Windows operating system. And I think you have to do it for this the .exe like this as well when you're calling it through Windows if I'm correct. I put my options, I call my Chrome service that I'm using and I'm adding my file path and then now I'm calling the web driver itself Self. and if we scroll down just call the driver on what we're looking for and we're good to go I want you to notice something we're gonna go through and find this actual file online and explain what's going on so the whole hiccup that we have we need to start from the beginning so think about googling just like this Chrome driver selenium and then you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna look for this right here and you're going to tap that this one right here and select the Chrome driver and then you need to look for this right here. This is what we're looking for. Let's click this. I have this right here, but you click this and you find the operating system which you're looking for. And this is what's called your JSON endpoints. You could take this, you could grab it and open it up in a new window, and it's gonna download this zip file for you. And you could run some commands to open the zip file and code it out, or you could just do the click, which is much faster. And as soon as you do that, now you have the newest version. And if you have to create that pointer for the location of where this file is, you're gonna use the second example that we did, if that's necessary for you. What failed for me was using the third party web driver manager currently. Not sure why, but in the last video, I gave these two examples. Initially, we're able to use this form right here where it's going to install any relevant version that's compatible with whatever you're doing. And that stopped working. So then I used the last known stable version for myself, which was this. And when I looked yesterday on Stack Overflow, I noticed that a few posts that I saw were trying to use my video and it wasn't working. That's what prompted me after a few messages messages in my last video and looking on Stack Overflow that this is necessary for me to do this again. I hope that these two examples can help you out. If you find any other workarounds to help you, please put those in the comments below with either your complete workaround coded out or just cut and paste or explain what you can do to help provide any information that will help the community. I would greatly appreciate it. But this is the end of the video. I would like to say please like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Feel free to hit me up on my socials as usual and like i said if you can commit to helping the community leave some comments below as any tips that can help anyone out or even give some explanations that would help me understand a little bit better as well i really would appreciate it but if you could help support this channel it'd be great consider buy me a coffee channel thanks or even channel memberships those would be greatly appreciated thank you for everything and all the comments over the last few years or those who have gave encouragement i greatly appreciate it see you in the next video bye